Hey guys, this video is brought to you by ebonus.gg. The service allows you to earn coins by taking surveys, watching videos or streams, or even just buying them. You can end up earning enough coins to get various codes for games or Xbox Live, Google Play, PlayStation Network for free. If it is your cup of tea, great. Check the link in the description with my referral code and join now to start earning. Uh, you get coins, you end up getting games, different things. It does take a while to get these coins, but hey, you're getting something for free out of it. If it's not your cup of tea, that's just fine too. It's not gonna hurt my feelings at all. Be sure to look in future videos in the description for potential keys to give you some free coins after you join. And I want to give a huge shout out to ebonus.gg for sponsoring this video. So let's get into it. All right guys, this little video, I'm gonna show you how I do my recording process from the Elgato. Now typically what I'll do is I'll load up the game and then I'll go ahead and start the Elgato itself. So commentary and then record. And then after about two seconds for a little bit of a delay, I go ahead and hit record in Audacity. Now I do this because I record audio on both. It's easier that way for me. That way in case the commentary on one isn't good or is corrupt, I can use the audio on the other. Plus with Audacity, I have a little bit more capability to edit it if I need to, like get rid of the background noise like my computer running or echoes or anything like that. So it helps tremendously to use Audacity as a backup, but I use it as a primary for my, my game capture. Um, so after that, what I do is I do a little audio sync. Now this helps me because the Elgato is about a two second delay. I go ahead and go, I, I, I think I saw it from the Achievement Hunter guys or the Rooster Teeth people. Um, huge shout out to them. Uh, they do a little different, but this is the way I do it. I load up the game and I go down, down. I look at the, the capture device, make sure it's about two seconds. I wait for it to hit uh, another number. So at 58, we'll go up, 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 up. So then I know at 60 or a minute, it should be in the process of going up, up. If not, it's delayed too far and I need to reload the capture software. That's just how I do it. And if it's on the money, bam, I'm good to go for the entirety of the process. Now I don't use the flashback recording. I don't, I don't know why, I just don't. Uh, personal preference, I also don't automatically reduce game sound. I want, it, I want to be able to tweak that myself in the editor. Um, so I set it a little bit lower game audio is at 46 my voice is about 50 make sure your microphone's set i don't do anything else with it I'm like that there you go i don't even know what that means but that, that's where it's at <laughs> i do set the video title so typically it'll say uh like patreon dash 44 or online dash 273 like it'll just say something so i know hey this is what this series goes with um i don't use a description i don't use a tag i do use the game though and then other than that, I just make sure my settings are all good. I do swap it based off of what console I'm using. So I'm using the 360. If I'm not, I'll swap it to the Xbox One. It's easier that way for me. I always do 1080, allow 60 FPS and best. And pretty much everything else is generic. I didn't touch with anything. I don't make special profiles. It's just really simple for me to do it that way. The only other options are up here at the very top. And I always have backups just in case. Because I have updated it before and I've lost all my settings. So I always take screenshots of my settings. Um, capture wise, uh, I put it to my G drive, just an easy way for me to know where the videos are going to go and uh, keeps, keeps track of it. The sharing, this is pretty much whenever you process or export the video. I only do the, the MP4, nothing else. That's it. It's all I want. And I never mix the tracks ever. If I was to ever do a webcam, it would be its own separate track, but it would more than likely be from the webcam software, if, if at all. And then the live commentary audio is its own separate track. It's just easier for me that way and helps me get things done. But that's that's pretty much the process of me recording through the Elgato. Like I said, I made sure I synced it up. It was good to go. And typically I'll stop the Elgato software first from the recording. And then I'll stop the audio. I actually stopped it too soon. But you, you, got, you, got, you get the point. <laughs> I cut myself off. That way it's a little bit of a delay. And then I'll go to my editor and sync it up and we're good to go. So we'll be right back with that part. Now I may have forgot to mention that I go through and edit the, the audio. Typically I have a little bit of a lull in the start and the end, which I did not in this particular recording. So I'm just looking for a spot where I can, I can grab a chunk. So I'm just going to take this little piece right here. It's typically wherever I'm pausing in between breaths or something like that. I'll go to effect noise reduction and get that profile. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get this sample of audio and I select the whole thing, noise reduction, and then reduce. And the longer the, the audio file, typically most of my recordings are about an hour. 
Um, it takes a little bit longer, but do that and you see this little gap is no longer there. That helps with some of the background noise. And then I also go to effect normalize. I just try to make sure that it's all the same. If I do peak or if I don't peak, it's just easier that way. And then I export it. So I go to file, ex export audio. Then I go to whatever folder I need to based off the series. Typically I label it voice just so I know that if I do it in advance, it's voice dash AD. If it's somebody else's audio, I'll do chef dash audio and then the Italian dash audio. Just easier for me to keep track of the audio that way. Um, I leave it basic generic stuff. The quality is only 128. I don't mess with it. And then I hit save and it's good to go. All right, so once we get done with all that, we load it up into the editor. I'm using Adobe Premiere. I just recently got into this this past like, couple of months. I've been using the Movie Studio, Sony Movie Studio Platinum 12, I'm pretty sure. So this is all new to me. I'm still learning it. There might be a better way to do it, but this is how I've learned it. Um, in the project, I've already added a couple of files here. Go to import, and then I just load in all my other files. Now, I don't load in this audio because I don't want to use it if I don't have to. I want to use my edited voice. So go ahead and hit open, import all these files, and then we're good to go. So for this particular video, it is sponsored, so we're gonna go ahead and put that little intro in. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll keep it, I'm not really worried about settings wise. Need to make a couple of edits there, and then I'll just kind of go on down the line. Now, I'm not going to keep my, my actual in-game audio or voice. I'm gonna use the editor itself. Or actually, I might do it after the fact, but essentially I'm going to use the, the recording of me doing it and talking about it. And then after we're done, uh, maybe after this part, I'll go ahead and show you what it looks like and then what it's like synced. So I pretty much keep these two files together. This is the recording of the video of like the actual game itself. And then my voice right below it, which was the Audacity file. Um, it's a lot easier that way. I actually need to move these. No, I won't put that, put that there. And then the audio edits. So we got it this far, and that's pretty much it. I need to throw in the last part of this, uh, which is actually me editing it, and then I'll show you the rendering process whenever we get there. So be right back. All right, so in this part, I've actually synced up the audio to the down and the up. So what I usually do is I go ahead and adjust the audio gain I want my game audio to be lower now in the menus it's not as bad as actually in game in game I do about a minus 12 in the menus I probably do a minus 8 that way there's a little bit of background noise while I'm, while I'm not talking or in the gaps and it's just easier to do it and then what else I do is I go ahead and select everything and I unlink it at least in this particular program unlink that means they're each individual tracks and then once I got everything synced the way I want it to and then I reselect them and go to link so now if I need to make any cuts, I can, and they're not individual tracks. I can click and move and drag. It's just a lot easier for me to do it that way, um, but I know everything's in line. So um, as you could tell, this little clip is gonna show me saying down, down, like that last little part. So it's gonna be the down, down, up, up. So here you go. Down, down, I'll look at the, the capture device, make sure it's about two seconds. I'll wait for it to hit uh, another number. So at 58, we'll go up, 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 up. And there you go. That's all I do for it. And then the rest of the video should be synced just fine. Now I have had some glitches with the with the program um, in the past. They have been updating it pretty regularly, as it is pretty much the staple for a lot a lot of people to record video games on console. So uh, really good program, really simple to use. I don't use the editor. I don't do anything else. Strictly record the gameplay, then transfer it over here. So we're gonna finish editing this part. We'll show you the final video, and then we'll show you how I render it. All right, so the video is ready to roll. All I need to do is render it now. So what I'll do is I'll go to File, Export, and then Media. Now something that I really do enjoy about this is I can batch render a whole lot, which with my previous uh, software I wasn't able to. So <laughs> this helps a lot. First thing I want to do is make sure the source range is selected to entire clip. Now, I have had it before where it cut it and I was very upset. And there you go. In my preset, I've actually changed it. I have a YouTube specific one. Now I'm going to go ahead and change the output name. The output name is set to behind the scenes console recording. All these videos like this will be behind the scenes as I call it. Um, next one might be PC recording or something like that. Um, but that's how I have it set. So I made sure that it's set to save as this file name in this folder. This is where all my 
renders are set. I don't render to the same drive. I was, uh, was doing some research and it says not to do that as it could affect time that it takes to render. So I record to a separate one terabyte drive um, just, just for that. And then after I'm done uploading the videos, I move them to my own portable hard drive so I have backups of all the videos. So go ahead and hit save. Output name has changed. I'll output audio and video summary. I don't ever mess with. It stays the same. Now this is my settings for, for my YouTube stuff. I don't know if it makes a difference or not, but my target bit rate and stuff like that is 25. I was doing 100 and it was taking way too long. My graphics card is not compatible with the software, which sucks. <laughs> it's very unfortunate, but it is what it is. I just need to upgrade. I mean, this graphics card's like 2006. I got it a long time. I was still in college, man. I got it on like a Black Friday deal. And I didn't even use it for like three years. So it's way, way outdated. It's a GeForce GTX 660 Ti. And they're like 1080i now. So way, way behind the times. Audio, I make sure it's set to this. YouTube likes this setting. So I do I do that. I don't do anything else. No, I don't auto-publish it or anything like that. I do it all myself. Um, I don't mess with any of these things. And then if you do want to queue it, you can hit queue and it loads up a separate program. If you can afford it, do the Adobe Creative Cloud. You get Photoshop, you get Premiere, you get After Effects, you get pretty much anything Adobe <laughs> for one fee a month, and it helps so much, man. Definitely worth it if you can afford it. No doubt about that. And then I'll hit Export, and it'll start rendering. Like I said, my, my capture card, or my video card, is not compatible with the software, so it delays a little bit, or it'd be a lot faster. But that's the extent of my recording process and editing process for the computer for the console content. So I want to thank everybody for watching and see you guys later.